um, we definitely do need to use JOSM for this. Um, that means that um, all the training that I give today will be with the JOSM uh, uh, editor. Um, so please um, understand that that's why if you are an ID editor person that it's not quite what you um, see it to be. Right, we're going to start off with this introduction. And our first point is, what is validating about? To understand what validating is about will make your task a lot easier and it will help you to know what to look for and have a way to look for it. Right, <clears throat> two points. When you are validating, there are two things you're doing. You're maintaining the mapping in accordance with OpenStreetMap standards. We are mapping directly onto OpenStreetMap, and if we want our work to be seen, we have to tag and draw them correctly so that it makes a comp comprehensive and consistent map. So please, we need to understand and know um, the, the, the various standards of OSM mapping for tagging and for drawing. But more importantly is we have to meet the requirements of the teams in the field. They're the ones who are requesting that we do this humanitarian or disaster mapping for a specific reason, whether it's for um, spraying homes for malaria elimination, whether it's for um, planning the next round of inoculations for um, illnesses and diseases, or whether it's a landslide in a remote part of um, Japan uh, because of an earthquake. Uh, we will be mapping to meet the requirements of those teams in the field and that will help them do their job efficiently and effectively because they will know where to go, how to get there and um, how many people are going to be involved when they do arrive. So please, <clears throat> those two, in accordance with OSM standards, and meet the requirements of the teams in the field. To understand the requirements, please read the instructions of each project carefully, because each project is different. So please read the instructions carefully so you understand that. Right. <clears throat> For you to understand the correct tagging and correct depiction of features, um, you use the map features page on the wiki um, as your Bible. That is the one that you will learn to understand and know and go back to and refer to uh, whenever you need to know or understand something. So please <coughs> uh, use the map features page. Um, I will in actual fact introduce you to that later on and let you see what it's about. But please um, make a note of this uh, URL um, and keep it for your um, validation purposes. And also your mapping. Um, it helps you to understand mapping better and to learn new features and how to draw them. Right, I'm often asked, um, <coughs> What is a good map? Um, well, as far as HOT is concerned, um, as far as missing maps is concerned, and as far as the teams are concerned in, in, um, in the field and at the disaster scene, features must be in alignment with each other and then with the background imagery. Just remember that um, GPS equipment can be anything up to five meters out. The, valid, the, the imagery that you're using can be anything up to 10 meters out. So aligning to each and every one of those is still not guaranteed accuracy. But what you need to do is to make sure that the roads, the buildings, and the rivers are in align, alignment with each other, um, not the roads driven at, from, uh, dr drawn from one imagery and the buildings drawn from another imagery. The last thing that the team in the field wants to see when they open up the map is to see rivers and roads running through buildings. And that's not very helpful because they lose confidence very quickly in what we have produced. So we have to make sure when we're validating that we take a look at the overall picture that the um, uh, 
team in the field will be receiving. And that must make sense. So please understand that if it doesn't make sense, it's not good mapping. Right, in alignment with each other. Okay, please remember that. Right, there's another aspect to validation, which um, when people first start out, they don't quite understand. <clears throat> Just remember, you are or were a beginner at some stage, and you were feeling your way and trying to find out what you were doing. You may have made some mistakes and you may have got some messages from a validator already. But please remember that our job is to encourage mappers to improve their mapping and to keep mapping. We need as many people out there as possible to keep mapping. We've got a whole world to cover. And where there's more, still more than a billion people who are not on the map yet, and they are living in vulnerable areas. We need to get that mapping done. So your job is to help them to improve their mapping and give guidance to them to correct the mapping errors. But be polite, be kind, be empathetic, because they need that. They want to know that there's someone there that's got their back, that if they did something wrong, we would pick it up and say, hey, look, it's okay. Don't worry, we fixed that. So <clears throat> please, we need to give them the confidence to be able to continue mapping. And we need to give them the correct guidance so that they can improve their mapping, so that they learn how to square their buildings, so that they learn how to read a new feature and draw it correctly. That's the kind of guidance we need to give in the comments back to the people. But also important is if they got it all correct, those are the kind of mappers we really need to keep mapping. So please tell them, thank you very much for your time. You're doing a great job and you've got it spot on. You're, you're, got, you're reading the imagery correctly and you're drawing the features at the right size and the right shape. Thank you very much. Please keep mapping. Those are the people we really want to continue mapping because they have quickly understood and they're quickly um, getting up to, to speed on, on that. So please give um, good feedback as well as helpful feedback. That is important. Right, what is our target? Right, we need to have something to aim for. And our first target is to concentrate on achieving quality. Quality mapping means that people have a great deal of confidence in what we have done and how we have mapped it and will continue to request um, that we help them with their humanitarian issues. So quality over quantity. It's not a case of trying to turn the whole of the um, tasking manager page with green squares that indicate it's been validated. What we want to do is to turn those squares into green because the quality of the mapping is good. Right. What I would like you to do is to please check for hot disaster activations as a matter of priority. These will be marked as urgent on the tasking manager and should appear at the top of the list when you open up um, the explore projects page. Please look for those. You will see in the title, it will either say earthquake or hurricane or landslide or flooding. Look for those, please. These are time sensitive. We're talking about hours and days in, as a matter of saving lives. Uh, the first responders at the disaster scene need to be able to get moving quickly. So we need to get the mapping to them as fast as possible. They need to get out there and know where to find the people so that they can rescue them um, or give them the, the treatment that they need or get food to them because they're stranded somewhere. And, those are the things that count. So at hot disaster activation, please, a matter of priority. The next that we do 
is remember, beginners are the ones that make the most errors when they get started. Now, these aren't really errors. This is just them busy finding their way and learning what is mapping or what it's about. So we need to actually catch the task squares mapped by beginners as quickly and early on as possible. It give them the feedback they need to improve their mapping or fix something that is not quite right. So if we've got a problem with um, unsquared buildings or bad road work, um, <coughs> or even bad tagging. Um, we need to let them know early on. So if they've only done one or two tasks, that's not a lot to clean up afterwards and say, all right, we've, we've fixed that. Um, please um, remember not to do that again. Um, but if we wait and we miss them, they could do 20, 30 tasks before we catch them. And then that's a lot of cleaning up to do. So please, we need to give feedback uh, as early on as possible. So I'll show you how to find the task, the projects that are being mapped by beginners and how to find the tasks that are being mapped by them. And we need to try and catch them as early on as possible and help them to become good mappers. So please, concentrate on the task squares mapped by beginners. Those task squares that are mapped by intermediate and advanced mappers may not need anything done to them. Um, so even if we don't validate that task square, at least we know that the mapping is of a reasonable standard before we even look at it. So please look for the beginners. The two um, tools that you will be using mostly will be the tasking manager to find the projects that you need and to um, uh, grab a task square so that you can start mapping. And for validation, JOSM is definitely the better um, editor. So if you're not on JOSM yet, please um, uh, get onto JOSM as soon as possible and improve your ability to validate uh, as quickly as you can. So JOSM and Tasking Manager, and you need to know those two. Right, going on to JOSM, please. <coughs> These are plugins that you would require or need or help will help you uh, to do a better job. Um, the building tool speaks for itself. It is the tool that is used by most mappers and is, is very handy and very useful. So please make sure that you've got the building tool downloaded and use that and learn how to, to use it correctly. Imagery offset is another one that is just as important um, and you need to concentrate on um, understanding your imagery and how to, to read it and use it. A measurement tool. Now that's very good because you can measure the width of a road. If it's less than 1.8 meters wide, you can't drive a, a four-wheeled vehicle down it. So <clears throat> that would indicate it is very definitely a path. If you want to know whether a river should have a um, river bank um, showing it as a body of water, uh, measure it at its widest width. If it's more than 10 meters wide, um, that then uh, would um, qualify it for having the river bank shown. Okay, the terrace tool. Ah, that's a great one. If you're mapping in towns um, that have uh, these. Um, terrace buildings and jo uh, joined up uh, buildings. Um, so uh, use a terrace, draw the outline of the whole block. And if they divide it equally, you just click the terrace and it will divide it up into um, the number of subsections that you would require. Utils plugin two will speak for itself. It's an addition to the normal standard plugins that um, uh, JOSM opens up with. And those extra tools are also very useful to help you with your mapping and what you're doing. Right, another useful tool that we like to use um, is the map paint styles. This is um, on the GitHub um, and you, you can download that onto your um, JOSM the same way as you download imagery. I will show that to you. 
um, when we go to JOSM. Um, but in the meantime, just remember map paint styles is another very useful tool. Right. <clears throat> Other useful validation tools that we use, um, we can do an overall check once that the whole of the um, mapping has been completed and there's no one else working on the project, we can then open up the OSM inspector, keep right or Osmos, and we can go through and check that the various um, uh, areas are clear and free of any problems uh, before we can archive the, the project and say we're satisfied that it is completely mapped and is to a good standard. So those are useful tools that we use for cleaning up after the project. Right, last. Um, <clears throat> for those of you who want to uh, really get involved and um, go up into the activation stage and project, um, uh, manage your own projects, um, create your own projects, and to uh, coordinate mapping in your area, um, Hot Courses is the place to go to and have a look at the courses there. This will take you through all the things you need to know to become an activator. And um, uh, there is validation and uh, image retraining there as well. So please visit the hot courses and have a look there. Um, if you think that you are of a sufficient standard to become a validator, um, go onto the validator request form and please um, uh, put your name down. We will assess your um, uh, skills and ability and allocate you to a validation team or give you advice on what you need to do to improve to the stand, your standard to get to that. Now, I've been asked in the past, um, uh, how do I know when I am ready to validate? My classic answer is that um, when you start out mapping, you're busy trying to figure out what is a building and what isn't a building and trying to draw it carefully. Uh, you are very definitely a beginner mapper, but you get to a stage where you're starting to see the, 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 the buildings in the imagery quite quickly and you're drawing them easily enough, but you're also noticing where other people have left out buildings and you adding them there. You also notice um, that other people haven't drawn them quite correctly. And um, well, as you slowly get better at noticing this, you may even start fixing up some of those. That means you're becoming an experienced mapper. When you get to the point where you find you are doing this regularly, you're easily spotting the mistakes other people are making and you're fixing them and you're uh, moving on and completing tasks. You are already starting to validate. You're already starting to improve the quality of the map. And you should really consider becoming a validator so that you can help with this. So please put in an application and help us to keep the quality of the mapping and the, 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 um, encourage the mappers to keep mapping. Now, I mentioned the teams in the field and what those teams um, are, are doing is important for you to understand why you are mapping and why the mapping, what, what stages are mapping important. So let's have a look at these field teams that are out there. We're talking about the first responders who first arrive at the scene of a disaster and they're out there to try and save the lives, dig people out of rubble, um, rescue stranded people in floods, things like that. So that is the job of the first responders. And the humanitarian teams that um, go out there um, with their medical kits and their medical teams and their um, <coughs> uh, temporary uh, hospitals and clinics, and they go and tend to the sick and uh, try to combat diseases and fight off ep epidemics like um, the Ebola. So <clears throat> those are the people that we will be doing the work for. Uh, we will be producing the mapping so that they can efficiently and effectively do 
uh, what they need to do. Right, so have a look at this. This is going to give you an idea of the mapping that we do and where it is going to be useful and helpful. That is what mapping is when we start. There's no data or very minimal amount um, and it doesn't really mean much and it doesn't tell anyone anything. However, when we start doing our satellite imagery mapping, in other words, um, uh, mapping directly from the satellite imagery, we're able to add in the roads and the buildings, um, land use, uh, waterways, uh, we can add all of that. We can see where there are bridges, uh, culverts, tunnels. Um, we can put all of that on the map. Now, what does this do? It helps them to understand where the groups of population are, where the, where the most people are centered. Um, it gives them the idea of how to get there. They can see all the roads and routes um, and how easy and difficult it is in the terrain that's there. So they use it for basic navigation to get to where they need to be. They can work out um, how many people are there or an estimate of how many people are there. So they know what equipment and the, the amount of people they need to take with them to be able to set up and handle the situation. That is what our armchair mapping, our um, volunteers do from um, their homes. And that is of the utmost important for those first responder teams. Um, I heard from Ivan Gayton at Medicine Sans Frontier tell me that when they are landed two years after the Haiti earthquake, it was absolutely great. For the 2010 Haiti earthquake, um, we mapped the whole of the Port au Prince area and that mapping was put onto OpenStreetMap so it was still there. When disease and epidemic broke out um, in the camps uh, around the um, disaster area, uh, two years later, they, Medicine Science Frontier flew in there and it was absolutely amazing. Um, Ivan Gayton's own words, he says, we hit the ground running. Now normally they land at the airport and they sit around and wait to find out where they need to be and what they need to, be take, to, need to take with them. But because they had the mapping in advance, they had it already planned out. They knew where they needed to be, how many people were there, and how to get there. They had all the equipment they needed ready and packed to go. They had enough staff members to be able to deal with the, the size of the, the population there. And when they arrived, they knew exactly where that group of population was, and they headed out straight away. And time saves lives. And that's what we are doing. We are saving lives by producing this for these uh, people in, in disasters and humanitarian vulnerable areas. Now the next stage of course is with added with local knowledge. Sometimes the teams in the field feedback information to us like the names of towns, cities and villages, uh, even down to hamlets. And <clears throat> this helps us to plan for infectious disease responses like the Ebola campaign in West Africa uh, for cholera outbreaks, uh, for vaccination campaigns, and just for logistical planning. Um, to give you some idea with the Ebola outbreak, they did not have the mapping. We were busy mapping for them. And uh, a patient would walk into the clinic and said they came from Nkabla. And everybody looks at each other and they look on the map and there's no ways where they could find Nkabla. <coughs> Now they needed to know where this man had come from uh, because they needed to get there to check how many other people had contracted Ebola and who had all been infected along the way as this man walked to the clinic. So they needed to find that out. And that was what they were doing with us. We were, they told us um, where the, the next village was that they needed to be at, that they knew was a problem and we would quickly get it mapped. Uh, they would add a name to it so that they could have it on their map and uh, anyone else from that area would be known. And this is how we moved in collaboration with the teams in the field. So the second area here that we're working on um, is built on what we mapped before and also adds to it. And that is just as important as that first part of the mapping. Of course, as we hand over to local population um, to do the mapping uh, from uh, 
ground sources um, and university groups doing um, studies in the area. We get further feedback and further additions to the map, which gives uh, 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 health centers, clinics, hospitals, um, and uh, various other large buildings that can be used for um, people, for refuge, uh, and for gathering. So we get schools, clinics. Uh, water points are very important because in some of the smaller villages in the remote areas, some of the water points are just a puddle in the ground. And of course, um, the humanitarian teams can't use that. So they need to bring their own water if there's no uh, regular water supply um, at that place. Uh, tunnels, airports, bridges, all of that sort of thing helps everyone to understand what they're doing, the water sanitation. We found that um, at one camp, uh, refugee camp, um, a whole area were getting quite sick. And it was that point that they noticed that the toilet facilities were too close to the groundwater supply. And uh, the toilets were starting to um, uh, pollute the water supply. And that was why they were getting sick. And so having been able to see that on the map, they moved it to another location away from any water supply. And that solved the problem. So maps are just as important, whether you're putting the, the, the water point on or whether you're adding the toilets, um, it's just as important. Of course, the last stage here is where we, we really want to be. And this is only done by people who live there, who can add and continue to update the information that they have. So uh, this gives good navigation, spray campaigns, uh, disaster vulnerabilities, all the management and planning. We can actually look at areas and say, this is prone to disaster or this is not. Uh, this is in a floodplain or this is not in a floodplain. So we can actually plan far better for when disasters do strike. So <clears throat> this is all um, the uh, things that you are um, going to be mapping. And this is the important area. If we get this right, everything else is much easier to do. So let's concentrate on the quality of the mapping from the satellite imagery and get that to the people who need it as quickly as possible. Right, for those of you who are using JOSM or want to start using JOSM, um, there are two very good videos out there put out by the training working group. Um, <coughs> the one is um, JOSM for beginners and helps you to understand uh, things like uh, relations and multi-polygons and how to draw buildings and rivers and roads. So please have a look at this. Advanced JOSM is for those of you who have um, being through that JOSM for beginners and have a good uh, understanding of what is going on there. Come on along to the advanced JOSM and have a look at that video. Each one is about an hour and a half long. So leave some time for going through this and um, I'm sure it will help you. One of the things it does show you is how to use the um, quick, the hotkeys um, uh, to be able to uh, map a lot quicker. So rather than having to select a tool, you just press a button on your keyboard and it immediately switches your, um, uh, your cursor to a new tool and you can map a lot quicker that way. So please have a look at those two videos and that will help you to advance um, to become uh, far better. Right, at this point in time, we've reached the end of the slideshow. Um, uh, let's take a break from that and <clears throat> are there any questions. Right, Awania, um, you have asked at what shows that I have been assigned validator role. You don't actually get a validator role as such. <clears throat> what happens is that you may be an advanced mapper or a, an experienced mapper and you get assigned to a validation team. And depending on which teams you get allocated um, <coughs> will depend on the level of validation that you can do. Now I will talk to you about those um, a little bit further on. Um, so just bear with me and I'll show you where you can find out what teams you actually are belonging to. Okay.
Do we have any other questions at this stage? Leon Plas, you raised the hand. <coughs> Will slides be available after this presentation? <coughs> um, these slides are my own. Um, I'm not sure if Jeffrey is actually um, Uh, uh, Jeffrey is having a problem with his connection, so this may not be um, uh, uh, being videoed, so I will record it. Um, I think there is another recording. Um, if you send me a message, um, I will try and get it to you. <coughs> or better still, if you give us your email, um, we can send it to you afterwards. Oh, hang on. Um, uh, Jeffrey will have those already, so that's fine. Uh, we, we will um, get to you if you've got it. Now, Leon, you have asked, how do you decide to validate a team assignment? What we do, we assess, um, first of all, how much mapping you've done. So we take a look at how many buildings you've drawn, um, how many kilometers of road you've drawn, and how many uh, kilometers of waterway you've drawn. And we take a look at those to see um, the standard of mapping, have you understood what you are mapping and are you mapping it correctly? So we do look at all of those things, not just quantity, um, uh, to us where, where it's, when it says on your profile that you are an advanced mapper, um, that does interest us, um, but that only tells us that you've been mapping for a while. We also take a look at how regularly you are mapping um, because that gives us an indicator of whether you are maintaining the quality and standard of your mapping or whether you just pop in and draw a few buildings and pop out again. Uh, so all of those things we will actually assess to um, allocate you to teams and decide at what level you can map. Just remember in the, the top global uh, map uh, validator team, uh, we, requ we would require you to be able to map in all aspects of mapping because we will ask you to uh, validate some complex areas like city centers or some complex um, uh, river schemes where uh, you have to use multi polygons um, for the islands and for the swamp areas, things like that. So um, yes, uh, we do assess um, you across the board for validation. It is um, slow, so please um, bear with us. Um, there's only a few of us who are doing it at this stage. Uh, so bear with us and be patient. Okay, right. I'm going to now try and um, change my um, desktop and move on. So if you will just bear with me. Okay, right, we're getting there. Hopefully um, that um, we will now be back to my um, screen share. And I spoke to you about the map features page <clears throat> and this is what it looks like. I use this as my Bible. I would like you to please use that as well. It is very user-friendly and um, everything is uh, click and takes you to what you need to know and for uh, further information. It is a very, very concise and um, complex uh, thing, but 
they've made it quite simple and easy to use. As you can see, this goes on and on. There is virtually everything you need to know um, about tagging and about <coughs> the features themselves um, is in here. As you can see, there's waterways, um, which is um, one of the things that we use. Uh, here is railways, there is um, land use and highways, um, amenities, buildings, the whole works is here. Now to show you how easy this is to use, let's go to the key building. Remember, um, each tag has two parts. Uh, it has the key, which is the, the, the main designated um, uh, feature, and it has the value, which is which subdivision of that and uh, description. So let's go to the buildings. I click on that. It immediately opens up into a more comprehensive thing. It gives you the key. Don't want that. Um, it gives you the key and it gives you the value. So the key is building, 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 and the value is apartments, bungalow, cabin, detached dormitory, um, all of these things. And there is on this side over here, <coughs> you can see an example of what they mean and what they're talking about. Here is a very good one. Um, I was mapping and um, validating in Mongolia, and I came across the Gare. The Gare is a tent-like structure, like a yurt. Um, it is sometimes a temporary a seasonal thing and it's sometimes permanent. Uh, so with these things can move around um, or uh, they stay where they are. Um, so I learned something new um, and how to identify a girl. Um, and that gave me the idea and the clue as to what it looks like. So please use this. Now, if you have any doubts, it gives you a brief description here, but you can go to a wiki page by clicking on the, the value, and sorry for the slow, and this brings you along to a page which tells you <coughs> that um, a gur is a yurt or portable round tent used as a temporary or permanent dwelling. They can be on a wooden platform or they may just be on the ground. Uh, here are some similar building types, tent, hut, cabin, or shed. If you find out that uh, the yurt or tent structure does not fit what you uh, think is a gur, okay, then you look for whichever one it might be. So that gives you some idea of the page on the map features and how it helps you. Um, just to give you an idea, let's go to the highways and see what we get here. Here it gives you motorways, trunks, primary, secondary. Now the brief description here uh, gives you some idea of what they are. Tertiary, unclassified is where <coughs> um, we have a lot of problems because we don't know whether uh, we've got an unclassified or a track. Uh, so please read up, understand better, and I will explain a bit more further on. Okay, they're all clickable. Um, you can click on that and it will take you to the page. As you can see, tag highway unclassified. Um, it gives you the full description and understanding um, in rural context. It tells you other tags that um, go with it or can be um, used with it and um, other links to highways. So please use this as your Bible and very friendly, very easy to use. Are there any questions at this stage with regard to tagging? No, okay. Um, let's continue then. Okay. The hot tasking manager is the next tool. <coughs> A 
as you can see, it gives you some rudimentary information. Um, 89.7 million buildings have been added um, using the Tasking Manager. 2.2 million kilometers of roads. That's over 119 million map edits. That's a lot of mapping. There's 252 people who are at present busy mapping. Um, uh, there's some more supplementary information as you scroll down. These are the um, uh, global organization that use Tasking Manager. You can see here the American Red Cross, British Red Cross, Medicine Sans Frontier, and of course, Humanitarian OpenStreetMap team. They're all the, the four um, founder members of the Missing, uh, the missing Maps uh, project. So um, we do make a difference. Right, now let's move on and we will go to explore projects. Right, this is where you select your projects. Remember I told you uh, with regard to disasters, you would be looking here at the very first part, which was marked urgent, urgent, urgent. At the present moment, this is taken up by um, COVID-19, but we did have um, the mapping for the uh, explosion in Beirut, and we were requested to map on that. That was um, uh, a, a quick project that um, we very, uh, very, um, uh, quickly got out because it was needed to assess the damage and start repairs and getting things moving. So <clears throat> we were requested to do that and it was done by intermediate and advanced mappers because it was a complex area of, of high rise buildings with um, an offset um, roof to footprint. And we needed more experienced mappers to be able to handle that offset. And they did a very good job and we are very pleased. Now that was 142 total contributors that managed to, oh sorry, that's not, that's COVID-19. Um, I can't see it because it's been archived, so it's not here anymore. So I can't give you that figure. All right, <clears throat> here we are. So urgent is what you look for. In the name, it will tell you um, whether it's a, a landslides or earthquakes or what, what it is. Um, as it was, it said Beirut explosion at the port, so you would have known that. The next thing that you're looking at is the, the task number. That helps you um, to know what, what the project number, that helps you to know what project you're working on. <coughs> and there's the hot logo. <coughs> Excuse me, one moment. Just need to have a quick drink. Hmm. Okay, right, thanks for being patient. Right, the hot logo that tells you that that is um, <coughs> being led by HOT um, as one of its projects. Um, you can see others, uh, other uh, communities, there's the youth mappers that are doing these uh, Philippines uh, mapping. Um, there's the World Bank. Um, so you can see that various organizations are um, or, uh, uh, involved in uh, the tasking manager as well as just hot but please remember the hot logo and help as as often as you can there right now you can filter remember i told you we would be looking for beginners as you can see here intermediate mapper intermediate intermediate but we want to find the projects that are being done by beginners so we go to the difficulty level up here and we select beginner mapper and what it will do, it will select all the projects that are allocated beginner mapper status so that <clears throat> we can find them as quickly as possible. Now, how do we know which ones we need to get in to map? Uh, as we can see here, this is um, very deceiving. In actual fact, um, let me take you further along so I can find a good example of what I want to, here we are, here's a good example. There is actually three different colors instead of two. Um, the light gray area is areas that have not yet been mapped. The dark gray areas is the, the percentage of um, tasks that have been mapped. And the red area 
is the percentage of tasks that have been validated. So we can see here that some of these are completely mapped, but have very little validation done. There are some that are almost completely validated and are almost finished. So you can see that here's one that is almost complete. 100% mapped and 100% validated. And that's where we would really like to be with all of them. Right, there are more filters if you want to look through, if you just want to look for, let's just say, um, the COVID-19 that we're very busy with at the moment. We scroll down here and we can find COVID-19. By clicking on COVID-19, uh, that will filter more. So you will find all the beginner mapper projects that <coughs> are associated with the COVID-19 um, mapping. And you can get in there and um, either map or validate. Um, there is um, loads and loads and loads and loads of different ones that you can choose from. So whichever is to your liking, um, those are the ones that you are going to be looking for. That would be under campaign. If you are doing it for a specific organization, um, example is um, uh, if you want to map for hot, you, you go to uh, select all the hot um, projects. Um, if you're with the Philippines, hot Philippines, there you can do that. So you can um, select the projects that you want to go to by using this. If you just want a specific country, that is great. Um, uh, you can choose which out of the one you want. Uh, Bhutan, Benin, Belarus, um, they're all there. Um, you're quite happy to explore the country of your own choice and do the mapping there. The types of mapping you can select if you just want to validate buildings, if you want to do buildings and roads, or you want to do waterways, um, <clears throat> that you can select those as well. So filter out and have a look. Um, most of you are quite experienced um, and advanced in mapping buildings because the majority of the projects are for mapping buildings. However, I would like you to um, look at waterways and roads as well. We need experienced people who understand and draw roads um, as the next important function that we're interested in. And then waterways is also important. Uh, last but not least, land use comes into play as well. When we start doing um, uh, residential areas and farmlands, things like that. So um, types of mapping. Or if you already know the project you want to go to, just type in the project number and go straight to there. Now, <clears throat> have a look at your project up on the right hand side there. You can see there's my name. Um, I have messages here. I can check out what my messages are. And the little red dot tells me that I have got messages. It tells me 10 new messages and I've got a whole lot of people here who are asking to request to join various teams and things like that. But, <clears throat> um, but I also get notified if my, one of my tasks have been validated. But more important, let's have a look at your um, settings here because this is important. We go to settings. <clears throat> And scroll down here. Here is important. Um, <coughs> default editor. Select the editor that you are using, ID editor or JOSM. Um, but you've also, those who use Plotlatch or are working with field papers, um, select those and um, that will automatically open up when you select a task. So my selection is JOSM. So every time I open a task, then <coughs> I will. Be a, it will automatically open in my editor. Right, click on open expert mode because expert mode gives you a lot more information and features um, that you need for doing your validation. Um, <clears throat> please fill in what country you are. It helps us to understand better um, where you are. I, I, that means if I send a message now, I will not expect an answer straight away because I know it's the middle of the night for you and you're busy sleeping. So please, um, uh, your country is, is very helpful. Um, 
for you to, um, uh, for us to understand um, why we don't get an immediate response. You can select here um, for um, if, if, if you're really just interested in water and sanitation or your projects are sustainable cities, agriculture, you can select those, in which case um, we will point you towards those projects in the tasking manager. So let's have a look at those. Right. I think someone is busy asking things. All right, um, David, um, I see you ask about the tagging of roads. Um, I'll, I'll come to that in, in a moment. Um, so if you bear with me, um, we'll do that when we get to JOSM. Okay, so let's continue. So let's say that um, <coughs> we have gone to our beginner projects and <coughs> We see that there are no urgent beginner projects at this stage. And um, so we can select what we want from whichever. And um, we can sort by urgent projects, active projects. So we can go through and certainly see um, a, quite, quite a range or, or a choice of what we want. Now I want to choose one which has some um, mapping still to be done. So I'm going to look, ah, here's one. Um, this is a project by the World Bank for Lilongwe floods. So let's take a look at that. It's a beginner project. Right, we can see here that they are doing roads, buildings and waterways. Now we open up on this um, uh, page, and of course it is an interim page before we get to the actual selection of tasks. Um, it gives a, a brief description of what it is, um, and uh, you can understand here. Now, um, one of the things you need to know is by scrolling down under coordination, you can see who has created this page. Now that is the page author. And if there are permissions uh, or, or problems or anything like that with the um, mapping or with the, you can send a message to the, the um, creator and ask him to change instructions or um, something is not quite clear or there's a problem with the imagery and um, ask what should be done there. So you can send a message to them by going down to questions and comments. And as you can see here, if you read questions uh, and comments, um, th there's someone has come along and said, the custom imager is now working. Thank you for the fix. So they've actually made a note that the imagery isn't loading on JOSM, as you can see here, and someone has done something about it. So please um, use this box. Once you start writing here, um, it comes up at the bottom here, managers or authors. Uh, please just click on author if you want to send a message to the person that created the project if something needs to be questioned or changed. Do not send to managers uh, unless there is no response from the author. If there's no response from the author, then you can include the managers. But it, it is um, uh, not very helpful to include author and managers in everything. Um, they are also uh, volunteers with limited amount of time. So please um, be careful who you keep interrupting or sending messages to. Okay. Now here it gives um, who, who has permission to map. It says all users. So beginners, intermediate, advanced people can, can map. That's not a problem. Um, but who can validate? It is users with intermediate or advanced levels. So you don't need to be in a validation team to be able to validate for this project. Um, if it did, it would say um, only team members can validate and there would be a list of teams um, that would be allowed to validate. Now, <clears throat> you did ask, um, how would you know what teams you belong to? Um, 
if you go to your profile page, um, let's see if we can go, you can't go straight from here. So what you do is you type in here, taskhottersosm.org, users, and your username. Okay, and click on that. And it will take you to your profile page. I hope. There we are, right. Okay, it tells you um, what um, level of mapping you've reached. I am advanced mapper. Um, I've been around a little while. Um, but if you scroll down to the bottom, <coughs> it doesn't show the teams. Ouch. Okay, um, that's not very useful. Um, but it, my teams, and it shows me hot global validators and validator trainees. So those are my teams, and um, you can see that um, I've got teams there. Um, you can go to your own stats, your projects, or your tasks. So this you can use to find out how you're doing and where you're at. <coughs> uh, no, don't want to go there. Let's. Go back. Right. Um, okay, yeah, right. Um, if you go back to the, the top there, um, you have a look. Uh, this tells you how many buildings you've mapped, how many kilometers of road you've done, um, how many waterways you've mapped. So um, if you build up on those um, and keep mapping until you have an appreciable amount there, um, I would be looking at in excess of 1,000 kilometers and 1,000 kilometers. However, um, that does not mean to say that if you don't reach that, I will be assessing you when you do apply and I will take a look. If you've only done 400 kilometers of road or even 50 kilometers of road, I will look at the standard of the road that you are drawing. Um, so it, this is not a, a, a significant feature. It helps me to understand that you have done uh, an appreciable amount. So it would be worthwhile for me to go and check the standard that you're working at. Um, <clears throat> And if the standard is good and you do understand what you are doing, um, you will be considered for validator um, teams. Um, so please <coughs> work on the standard of your mapping and getting it correct. If you want people to review your work, please click on the button that says, please review my work. Or you can tag um, so, uh, someone in the, um, uh, in the comments of that task and say, uh, please check my work. My uh, username is R-A-Y-T-O-U-N. So um, if you tag me or any other validator that you see doing validation. Right. Let's go back to the um, projects page. And let's have a look here. <laughs> here is a task, right? Um, I, I talked you through this. It gives a good description. Um, the team there uses with advanced level. So all the permissions and the coordination, all of that is here. Um, this is an urgent task. Let's go to contribute down the bottom. Now remember. Um, you can do a whole lot of other things here as well. You can add it to your favorites if you like working on this one and you want to keep coming back to it. So let's go to contribute. And here we have, we can see that all of these are blue. If they weren't mapped yet, they'd be white. If they were um, invalidated or um, not need more mapping, they would be orange. 
um, so you can see that the colors are all there. What we need you to do is to concentrate on the areas that are marked in uh, red, and um, those are the ones that are of highest importance, but please validate other areas as well. If you're a beginner validator, um, start on the outskirts of the task and uh, work your way inwards towards that because these would be the uh, easier um, tasks to validate to start with. Now, <clears throat> Remember, um, I told you that um, you, you have all the, the beginners that you need to, to pass. So you're going to look at contributions. Sorry, my apologies. You're going to look at the instructions first. Read the instructions. As you can see, some of these instructions are quite comprehensive and very helpful. But most important of all, the project specific tells you what imagery to use and how to use that imagery. <coughs> so <coughs> if it says, please use Bing, but refer to Maxar for an updated version, um, it means that Bing is the one that they want you to align to. And it means that Bing is probably sharper and clearer, but Maxar may be more up to date, but not as clear for mapping. So please remember Maxar or um, Bing, whichever they are asking you, or use the custom imagery that comes up with the tasking manager. Um, read the buildings and roads and paths. Um, this tells you what the mapper has been told to do so that you understand why the mapper is mapping the way they are mapping. If they're not understanding the instructions and the instructions are misleading, contact the author and ask them to change the wording on the uh, project so that um, it is not as confusing. Uh, right, so read the instructions carefully. Then go to contributions. These are the contributors. You can see some people do a lot of mapping and some people do a lot of validating. Um, this tells you who they are that the little um, stars would tell you that this person is advanced, a half star tells you they're intermediate, and a white star tells you they're beginners. But you want to look at the beginners, so you would go to the all levels here and click on that and choose beginners. Now it starts off by giving you the beginners. What you can do is find out how soon that they, or, or, or how long they've been mapping, by hovering over. Um, remember, everywhere on this tasking manager at this stage has got hidden um, information. So please don't be shy to hover over things to find out what they say. Let's take this um, bar, for instance. This gives you uh, the percentages, 100% mapped, 40% validated, and 0% bad imagery. So um, by hovering over certain things, you will find certain information. Please experiment and find out what all of those are. Now, if I hover over this person's name, it says they um, only started um, this month, but that was um, uh, about 15 days ago. Uh, the next one down has been mapping um, for three months, uh, two months. Um, so you can see there now, um, most of the beginner mappers that you want to catch have only done one task and you need to see those. Now those will be right down at the bottom. So scroll right down and have a look. You see these ones here, um, they are starting out. If they're doing very good mapping, this one has been around a while, but they've only mapped one task. So they're not very prolific. Um, looking through and you can see um, they've been around quite a while, 29th of the 6th, 17th of the 7th, uh, 7th of the 7th. Now this is a slow process and <clears throat> it takes a while to try and find these people. So <clears throat> we can't at this stage um, uh, select who has mapped recently or the latest mappers, but we can look on the tasks. And we can see here 
um, people who have just finished mapping something and <clears throat> we can have a look at their date of registration or have a look at their um, task and oh you can collapse that if it's getting in your way and we can see that they've done a task but it, that hasn't been validated so we can actually go in and validate that if we want to send them an email or a message and we want to them to to know which task you were, were given they were given you can use this little um uh, link here if you click on this what it does is it saves the link to this task square uh, onto uh, your um clipboard and you can paste it into the message that you are sending so that they can click on that and go immediately straight to the task rather than wasting time searching around for it. So that is um, a quick way of sending a message and uh, pointing them directly to the task they need to look at, especially if you're asking them to go back and fix something. Right, you can click here. Um, all tasks available for mapping. There is nothing because this is completely mapped, ready for validation. And you can see all of these are ready for validation and you can go through and see. Um, now I see that this was completed on the 25th of the 9th. Twenty-fifth of the 9th. So these have just been recently done. Um, and it would be good to get in there and if we can give feedback as quickly as possible after they've mapped um, then we can stop them from making any further mistakes right <clears throat> if a person has done mapping then you can zoom to the task and you can start validating now remember i said that you select your val uh, your validation tool your um, editor now you can see down the bottom here <coughs> you have the editor my preferred editor is josm so whenever i select to validate the task it will open up automatically in my josm <coughs> So um, that, that is um, important to have that selected. If you want to change and go to ID editor, um, you can select the ID editor before you validate, uh, you start validating and that will take you there. Okay, if you want to deselect a page, just click on that, a task then just click on that and that will deselect it. If you've been working on a task and validating this task, and there's something wrong with the roads or the rivers coming in from the task alongside it you can't open that task because it has already been <coughs> sorry it has already been validated so it tells you to validate another task but what you can do is go to the triple bar here click on that and that will take you to the task and comment and it gives you the task data you can have a look at the change sets and view that or make a comment right so those are all ready for validation let's have a look at last updated first nothing unavailable right <clears throat> here we have how do we find all the tasks that a mapper has mapped
If we click on, no, let's go map another task. Right, so if we go to someone um, who has done quite a lot of mapping, uh, here, <coughs> 59 tasks mapped. If we want to see them, right, we select this person. I seem to be stuck. Okay. I need to go back and come back to this again. My tasking manager is a bit slow. Sorry about that, folks. Right, let's get back to where we were. Right. We're on a different project, let's just see. So, um, let's have a look at this person who has mapped 13 tasks. I can click here um, to see the tasks. It should come up there. And I can see that all of the tasks that this person has done has already been validated. Um, so let's move to this one. And I can see that some have been validated and some have not. So I can see who has done and who has had tasks validated and <clears throat> looking at these are all advanced now there's one that's a beginner you see there's no stars next to their names so let's have a look here three tasks and those three tasks have not been um, validated so here's a good opportunity to get in and see this person I registered on the 17th of the eighth month, um, 17th of August. So let's have a look and we want to um, have a look at one of these tasks. I will choose this one here. So I will click that off and I'll click that off and I will ask to validate this task. So it will automatically open in JOSM, but I don't have my JOSM open. So I'm not going to click on that because it won't open. I can then change it to ID editor and validate the selected task and it will open up in ID. And you can see there um, that it's opened up in ID editor. So it automatically opens in your editor of choice. You can go backwards and forwards um, to it. Um, resume validation. Right, now, if you want to leave, um, you will see um, that this will be populated by little black locks and the task that you are working on will be a red lock. Um, that's the task you will be working on. Um, if you want to go out and, and leave, um, please just click on stop validation. 
and that would just revert it back to someone else can validate. Um, if you are happy that everything has been mapped, you click on yes and <clears throat> you leave a comment. Um, uh, thank you very much for your time. Uh, make sure that you are uh, thanking the person uh, correctly um, and you can submit the task. If it's not, you click no. Please comment um, quite clearly what still needs to be mapped to be able to mark this task as complete and submit the task, okay? So <clears throat> those are the things that you do. I'm going to stop validation and it will take me back to um, the project. Are there any questions at this stage? No, no questions. Okay. Please don't be shy to type in any questions that you might think of. Um, I, I will try and keep uh, pace of your questions um, and see whether I can help you. Right, I'm going to open up my JOSM editor. Let's see if this happens quickly or slowly. <coughs> Right, now we're going to get to the interesting part. We've been through all the nitty gritty and um, things that we need to know. Uh, this is the interesting part. This is where we are actually going to be doing uh, what we want to be doing. Right, I'm going to um, select specific items, but before I start, <coughs> This is your JOSM. Um, you have all your tools and everything up at the top here. And <clears throat> that is where you will find most of the stuff you want. So let's just open up a pre-selected area. Right, this is a task that I have chosen and I've frozen it in time. Um, I found this task that had been validated by a person using the ID editor, so it did not have a whole lot of the facilities and features that the JOSM editor has got. Um, so there are some inherent uh, errors in this. Now, as you can see, this has opened up a whole lot of items down the side. The blue tick here is for the validation window that opens up uh, the validator down the bottom here in a new panel. 
Um, <clears throat> there is the one here, which is a list of people working on the selected objects. And that opens up the author panel. And that tells me all the people that have mapped. Um, if I select an individual feature, I can see who mapped that feature. And I can see all its tags. And I can see the layers that I have got. Now you'll notice I don't have a background imagery switched on at the moment. Um, <clears throat> that's because we can see this a lot clearer. Up at the top here are all your tools. Remember I said um, that you have your normal tools. Um, that is the existing tools that you have, but here are the shortcut keys. Remember shortcut keys, they come in very handy and they're very quick and easy to use. So please start learning to use shortcut keys. This will speed up your mapping no end. Now, remember I told you to add utils plugin two, and that's this more tools here, which then gives you the terrace building, reverse a terrace, and gives you a whole lot of other items. Please explore these, have a look um, at what they are, and um, also learn how to use them. As you advance into more complex areas, they become very useful indeed. Now, <clears throat> what are we looking for? And how do we find it? The first thing that we are looking for and ask ourselves, is this task square completely mapped? And that's important. We want to make sure that everything is on that. Now using JOSM, I am using my select um, cursor. Uh, if you're in any other cursor, building or line tool, um, then just prove push the S key on your keyboard and you will get the select tool. I drag a square around the whole of my task and I let go. What it does, it selects everything inside that task. That's the, the, the ways, the nodes, everything is, is selected. I can then zoom in and I can see here, everything is selected. How will I see what is or isn't missing. So I switch on my imagery. Uh, I use Bing for this one. So let's switch on the imagery. And I start looking around to see whether I can see any roads and things like, okay, right. I immediately start looking and I see there's buildings missing here. Right, if that's all that's missing, it's just a few buildings here. Uh, I'll just add them myself. Um, that's not worth really worrying about. That can quite easily happen because the person gets so involved in mapping um, down below that they have forgotten that they actually have some missing up the top there. So that's not important, but just look over the, the whole thing, make sure you can see that um, virtually everything has been mapped here. So yes, it's looking good. I can go through, um, oh, I find a few more items here. Uh, there's something else there. So there is sporadic stuff around. Um, if we're in a hurry and, and there's a lot of validating to do, I will just say that, um, uh, please note that in the center task, there's quite a few buildings that are still missing. Please check and map. And I would invalidate this so that um, the buildings can be added. Someone else can check through, add the buildings and uh, market is complete. Now I can see a list of all the authors that have worked, all the mappers that have worked inside this task. So you can see that the person that marked, marked it complete may not be the person who's making the mistake. So remember I said, what are you looking for? The first thing you're looking for, is it completely mapped? This is the way to check if it's completely mapped. If it's not, then um, you want to reject this. But before you reject it, run the validation uh, function to find out how many errors and things there are on it. So I will run the validator to find out if all of this map stuff is of any use. And I get 64 warnings. What kind of warnings are those? Now, um, Jocelyn does a very good thing. It actually 
opens up a new layer automatically and that layer has got all of these yellow markings on that show me where the errors are. I can expand on this and it tells me what those errors are. Crossing building highway, um, we don't want that. Crossing highways, we don't want that. Overlapping buildings, uh, we get quite a bit of that because there are problems with the, the ID editor in that it tends to hide features. It doesn't show all the features and some mappers think, oh, oh okay, um, those things haven't been mapped yet and they start mapping them. So that is um, something that we look for in the ID editor. Right, so those would need to be fixed. How would you get to them? You expand each one and you can click on that. When it's highlighted, right click on your uh, mouse and zoom to the problem and JOSM will take you right in to have a good look and see what it is. So that's a quick, easy way of getting around and seeing each and every one of the problems. Okay, so right, if we invalidate this because of the um, <coughs> uh, lack of mapping, then we move on to the next task. Now, what else do we look for? We want to know if all the roads are connecting up to each other, because um, if they don't connect up, then the um, tools that do the um, routing to find your way around sat navs and, and phones and things like that um, won't be able to notice an, a, a, an intersection or a junction and they won't know that there is a road there. So that's something that we need to check. To do that, um, select a main road that runs through the area and you want to see whether, I'll stop that. Okay, there we go. Um, if we want to see um, which roads are connecting up and which ones aren't. We use the shift, hold down the shift key, hold down the control key. So shift and control at the same time and press E on the keyboard. And immediately it grabs all of those roads that are linking in to that main road. And I notice that there are certain roads that are staying gray. Now there's something wrong there. Why are these not joining up? I need to investigate that. Um, I can see around my time. Let's investigate this one here. And <clears throat> that's where the join is not happening. So I need to check, okay. I can see that this road has not linked up to that one, but something else is more worrying. This dog legs. Now, if you think about the sat nav tool that says you want to come down this road, down to the main road and carry on. But in actual fact, the way this is drawn tells you that this road actually goes to there and drops off at the house, goes nowhere. Now that confuses the routing tool. Um, so even if this is joined, now here I'm going to use my uh, quick keys. Um, I want this road to connect to that road. So I select the node that I want to move. I hold down the shift key and I select the node that I want it to move to and I click on that. Both nodes are now highlighted. I press M on my keyboard and that automatically merges it, they're joined together. But that still does not solve my problem of this dog leg of the road. What I do is I select the road that needs to be changed. I am going to split this road here so that the routing uh, software will then be able to make a choice at this junction. So <clears throat> I have selected this road, I hold down my shift key and I select the node that I want to split. And I've selected that node and I press P on my keyboard and I want this to go to the first segment of the highway. Yes. Now the software will see that this road runs along like this 
and I come to an intersection. It can now make a decision, do I go straight or do I go right? And it will check that will take it to the highway, it will go straight. So that will help. The other way of doing that is to select this road, select that road and press C on your keyboard. The C on your keyboard automatically combines that into one road. Now that even helps the, so the, the route selection tool even more because it will automatically know that that is a continuous road and that is a side road. Now this one is incorrectly tagged because it is a driveway taking you onto a private property. So that should have been a service road, um, just to give you some idea of that. Now, what have I done? I've connected that. So if I select this main road again, I hold down my shift key and my control key, and I press E, and I see now that this is automatically accepted and it is connected. So that will solve the problem there. The thing is that this is still not connected. And when my navigation sat nav comes down this road, it won't be able to tell me how to get to this area here because it doesn't know that there is a connection there. So you can see that it's quite important to check that. Also for the um, uh, navigation tool, we need to have a look at continuity of road. So in other words, does it dog leg off at an angle somewhere or does it continue along its whole length? So that's something that you can do simply by hovering over. Um, as you hover over, it highlights each road. You can see straight away whether it's dog legging or it's continuous. So please zoom in and have a look. Can you see whether it is dead straight or whether it dog legs at a strange angle? Okay, so um, we have got that. The other thing that we're looking for is tagging. Now, when I zoom out, I can see that this is a tertiary road, but it does not take me to a major town. I can see that that's not happening. Um, let me switch off that layer and I can see here, it doesn't go anywhere near. So that can't be a tertiary road. At best, it's taking me out of the town and down to another main road. So that could very well be an unclassified. Um, So that would be wrongly marked as well. Um, if I open up this and I look at this tertiary road, this tertiary road runs into an unclassified road there. So that can't be because a tertiary road must link you from one large community to another large community. So that should be connecting to towns and that doesn't happen. So that may not be a tertiary road either. So that's checking. Here's another example. Um, that should not be a um, tertiary road and it doesn't go anywhere. So that would not be. Um, I can also see that this is a formal settlement with a grid pattern, uh, but the roads are unclassified. Those should be residential. It is a formal built up residential area. And so all of these, instead of being unclassified, they should be residential roads. So those are all things to be looking for. Uh, you can invalidate and ask a, a person with JOSM uh, to please complete this task square um, and correct all the um, validation errors using the validation function. Uh, you can ask them to reclassify the roads correctly uh, to residential in the towns and to check the tertiary roads to see whether they're correct. Okay, does that give you some idea at this stage how to quickly and easily see whether all the roads are there and whether all the buildings are there? <clears throat> the, the idea of validation is in actual fact to check that the task square has been completely mapped and it is mapped to a good standard. 
it does not mean that you have to fix everything yourself. Please don't do that. There are only a limited number of validators. There are thousands of mappers. Please invalidate and let the mappers fix a task square. Um, if you have gone through a project and you have invalidated a lot of tasks, you can go back afterwards and start mapping those tasks. Um, you don't have to leave them, but you can go back to them and uh, correct and fix them up yourself if you want to. But don't use up validation time spending too much time fixing up a task unless you've been asked to actually clean up the area. The other reason why you invalidate is to indicate to the people who are running a mapathon, who are, have trained these mappers, that their training has not reached the mappers and that they're still making too many mistakes. So the more invalidating we do, the more it flags up the fact that you who these mappers are not that good uh, please look at the training and try and get them up to standard so that that is also very helpful to validators for the project uh, creators and the mapathon organizers to understand how good their training is and how good the beginners are mapping so please understand that the invalidating is not a, an insult it is actually very very helpful Right, I'm um, just checking. Right, David, you have asked a, 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 a nice question there. Um, in your um, JOSM uh, validation, you're quite correct. If you mark a um, road as being residential, um, then the validator would expect there to be a name on that road. That is one of the features that you can ignore um, in areas like this because we have no way of knowing a name for a road because we can't see the street names or the street signs. So <clears throat> the only thing that we can say is that it is a residential road. The fact that it is not named is of um, less importance than um, the actual correct tag. So that is one way that you can, let me try and see if I can get this to show what it shows. I will change this. So unclassified, I'm going to edit that and change this to residential. Okay. And I run the validator again. Okay, this time it hasn't done it, but generally it says um, uh, highway not named. So, but it hasn't done that on this case. Okay, um, but that is one of the items you can select. Remember when you read the instructions and you have a look, if it says that this task is all about buildings, in other words, please draw in all the buildings. As a um, validator, you are looking to make sure that all the buildings are here and they are correctly drawn um, and tagged to a good standard. <clears throat> um, that is what is being asked by the people in the field and that is what they want. But as a, a mapper, they would only map the buildings. As a validator, you would check to make sure that roads are not running through the buildings, the waterways are not running through the buildings and it is in general in a good state. So that is something that you would then fix up um, so that when you um, mark this as uh, a good standard validation, uh, it's not going to go through looking like a mess or a dog's breakfast. So that is your part there. That is what you would be expected to repair and fix up because the mapper has not been asked to do that. And in some cases, um, with the selected um, uh, editing on the ID editor, they may not even be able to do or move any of those. So please, those you need to fix up yourself in that case.
Right. If any of you um, have any questions, please type it into the Q&A and I will pick that up and um, come back to you. Okay. Uh, let's push on now because there's still a bit to cover and we're getting close to the end of time. Um, I want to take you to road classification. So let's get rid of this one. And go to highway classification. <coughs> right here, um, I've chosen this one because um, the countryside is where we have the most difficulty and most people prefer to choose track rather than unclassified. So let's understand what we're looking at here. Um, I immediately see that there are some roads that are not connected um, up to other roads. Um, I can see them little um, islands of uh, um, service roads that are not connecting up to unclassified public roads. I can see that unclassified roads stop and don't go anywhere. Uh, so I'm looking at this and I immediately see that. But now I'm looking at this and this is quite a large area. And when I zoom in, I can see that there are little clusters of farm, farms and <coughs> um, communities all along the way here. Now you must be able to reach them along a public road. A track is not a public road. A track is a private road. It is for the farmer to get to his fields and travel around his fields. It is for the forester to travel around and uh, traverse through the forest areas. Um, it is for the townspeople to go direct to the farmlands that they farm on and go and farm there. So please understand that a track is a private road to get them to their farming areas or to move around the farming areas. But you need a public road for members of the public and people to reach those farms and, and those communities. So I don't see any public roads running through here. A public road would be a residential road. Uh, a public road would be an unclassified road. Unclassified would be the lowest um, classification running through this area. And then you'd go up uh, to tertiary and higher. So I would expect to see some uh, unclassified roads so that I can get through this area uh, and reach these communities. Now, <clears throat> I look for a road that runs, con oh, ouch. Um, have a look at this. There is a track, but it's not complete. It doesn't link up to the road. Um, that's not very good. That would need to be um, linked up, but that's not a track. That is um, what I would name as unclassified road because it travels, traverses through the area. But is it unclassified because it runs through the middle of this farm area. <coughs> um, that is debatable. Um, it doesn't quite do that. So we need to have a look and see which are the roads that would be used here to traverse through the area. One way is if you see all of this here, is how do you know which is a path and which is a road? Remember I said the measurement tool? Have a look at this little tool down the bottom here. That is your measurement tool. And if I select my line tool, that's this one up here. Um, I press A on my keyboard and my <coughs> cursor changes. That gives me the line tool. I select one side of the road and I drag it out to the other side. And you can see here down there that this ro road is 2.8 to 3 meters wide. Now that's easy for a vehicle to get down. That is really um, a definite road. But if I go to this one here and I select across here, 
1.2 meters wide. That's not wide enough for a four-wheeled vehicle. So <clears throat> I can then see, oh, if you are using the line tool to check this, make sure that you get rid of the single node that it creates. So use control Z to get rid of that. Now I use S on my keyboard and I'm back to selection. So that would be a path and that would be a road. Now that you've zoomed in and you've got an idea of size, um, <clears throat> that helps you look through the area and you can follow the roads to see where they go and <clears throat> are they continuous. So <clears throat> I want to have a look here and I've got a path and it definitely looks like a path. So that is good. Um, that is excellent. <clears throat> Here we have a very definite road and it's shown as a track. I can see that it continues along here. <clears throat> but it, then it thins out. Now, there is a difference here. When you measure the road, just remember that depending on the season, if it's in the middle of summer, all of these trees will be um, grown quite big with lots of leaves. So in actual fact, your road will be broken and will be narrower because the vegetation will be overgrowing the sides of the road. So the road will be narrower if you have got uh, midsummer or midwinter. Midwinter, there are no leaves on the trees. However, the result is you can see everything a lot clearer. So that is very helpful to understand. Okay, I would sh be showing these as unclassified because it takes me through the area. Okay, do you see? Ah, oh, okay. Now this is what we once again call a dog leg. Do you see how this comes all the way down here and suddenly kicks off at an angle like that, rather than continuing through here and continuing and linking up to that. That would be continuous through, okay? And that would be traversing through the area. And I could see that that would be linking up to this unclassified road. But that should be a road, it's shown as a path. So you have a road, unclassified road, that suddenly stops and changes to a path. So please, continuity of road is important. Um, try and get the classification right so that you can use a public road to traverse through the area and a private road to come off. Now, a service road cannot come off a private road because that is the access to the um, uh, farmyard, to the uh, isolated dwelling or to the village. So that should be coming off a public road. So this road here should be at least an unclassified road, a public road, so that that private road, service road, can come off a public road. So that's another indicator. If you've got a driveway or access road coming off a track, that is incorrect. Right. Hopefully that helps to clear that up and understand a bit better how you would be um, looking at the roads in a, an area like this and how you would get them to traverse through the area in a continuous, oops, now we can see here, here's another dog leg. Um, I want to join this up, but this is coming down here and there. So I would have to split that road if I want to link and join. I would have to split this here if I want to link and join. There's another one, look, this dog legs like this, which is incorrect. Um, and then that has a gap that needs to be filled in. Okay, um, we can see this continues through here. Um, we have another dog leg that needs fixing there so that this continues through. So you can see how many errors are going to confuse the tracking um, and soft, the, the, the routing software. 
we need to try and avoid this. And this is understanding roads and how the various users are going to need the correct information to do what they need to do. One last thing that I want to um, go to. Let's just see. Um, a few questions in the chat, uh, Ralph. I don't know if you're good to take on a few questions. Okay, yes, I've been going through some of the questions, Jeffrey, and welcome back. I saw we lost you for a while. <coughs> um, right, I did answer David's question about the residential one, so that's been done. Is there a way to automatically identify nearly squared buildings? Uh, there is a tool. Um, I much prefer that you, in actual fact, use your, your eye and, and notice quickly um, uh, that tool uh, that um, uh, buildings are unsquared. Um, but at this stage, um, I have tried using some of the um, uh, identifiers of uh, unsquared buildings, and not all of them are very useful. So I would much rather you relied on building your own skill in checking that at this stage until they get a much better tool that will help us. Um, the problem with using the tool is that we tend to grab and square all buildings that that, that tells us to, and we end up with some um, unusual shaped buildings being squared and looking weird. We end up with some round buildings being squared, so um, this isn't always helpful. Please use your own judgment and have a look and square them. Yes, um, David, I did say that the uh, width of the road versus path is uh, 1.8 meters. Right, we're coming up to um, the end here. Let me go to file. Right, the last thing that I want you to understand <coughs> is waterways and rivers intersections. Okay, um, we have three, the bridge, a culvert, and a ford. A bridge you can very quickly and easily identify. <clears throat> there is generally a change in the color of the road running across it, or it is sectioned, or <clears throat> it may be the same color, but you have a very strong shadow uh, alongside it, which shows that this is elevated above the water. So then you would put the bridge on and the bridge would be on the road. Let's go to a bridge. Now here again, um, showing you this is a bridge. I can see a discoloration, I can see a change in the pattern, and I can see the deep shadow. So this is a bridge. So what I do, I'm working on the um, the road, not the waterway. Oops, we don't have a waterway. Let's quickly add a waterway. So my line tool, I press A on my keyboard and I just add in and I press select for that and I add <coughs> waterway, waterway and let's make that a river because it's wide enough. Okay, so I've got a waterway river running across. Now, my validation tool will immediately flag that because there's no intersection and there's no, uh, they're both at the same level. So I'm going to show you quickly. I grab the X and I create a node at the beginning of the bridge and I grab the X and I create a node at the other end. I hold down my shift key so that I've got both of those nodes selected and I press P on my keyboard to split that piece out. So I, okay, I have split that section of road out so that it continues on with the same tagging as the rest of the road, but I'm going to add here a bridge. So I'm going to type in there bridge and yes, a bridge yes, okay, and that tags that as a bridge. But remember, I said it's above the waterway, so I need to add another tag which is layer, so I've got layer, and the layer is one, so it shows it it's above the water. Okay, now that will satisfy my validation tool because it will immediately rec recognize that this road is raised above the water 
uh, at a level one and that is not so that is your bridge complete now the next one that i want to show you is a culvert ah okay now here we have let's switch this off so you can see clearly here you've got the road is raised up on a embankment but there's no bridge there the road all runs at a single level but you can see along the bottom here there's a dark shadow here now this is three concrete um, tunnels that go underneath the, 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 the uh, embankment here and the waterway runs through so I switch this on I've got the road here and the waterway let's add a waterway shall we so I'm going to um, press A on my keyboard that gives me my line tool let's add the waterway running through here okay select that and add a tag i'm going to select waterway river again okay and i've got my river now remember that the river is running under the road with a culvert it goes under the road so you need to put the tunnel on the river so i put a node at the beginning of the culvert and i put a node at the end of the culvert i hold down my shift key and I select both of those nodes and I press P on my keyboard to select that section of waterway. Now the waterway contains the tags of the original waterway and all you do is you add tunnel and the tunnel is a culvert. So I've added tunnel culvert, okay, and that is added to that short section. And remember it goes underneath the road so you add layer and the layer is minus one minus one because it goes under okay press okay and now my validation uh, function will agree with that because it says the river is not at the same level as the road it goes through a tunnel underneath the road and it is a culvert so that will satisfy that and that will be the correct way of intersecting that. Now the last one you need to look at if I can find it. Oh silly me, yeah. Okay. Is this one here? I have got a waterway running through here, which I can clearly see, and I've got a road running across it. So let's put the road in. I press A on my keyboard, which is the line tool, and I put the road running in here. Now you see, I draw my road with a series of long straights, round a corner, long straight again. That's a quick, easy way of drawing roads um, so that it follows correctly. Um, uh, I'm going to select that. I'm going to add the tag of <coughs> highway unclassified. Okay, I select highway unclassified. I press OK. Um, and I'm going to put my waterway in. So I press A again, and let's add my waterway. Select that and add waterway river. Okay. Right, I've got my two components here. Now, this is a Ford. The road and the waterway are at the same level. We can see that the road continues through and on, but there's water running through. So we can see the discoloration of the road shows that that is still the waterway. So the road is running through the water. That means they're both at the same level. That means that they actually intersect. To intersect here, I press A on my keyboard, which gives me um, that, that tool. And I move the cursor until both the waterway and the road highlights. And I click on the node. And I've added a node at the intersect section and I press S to select that node. Now I can see that the node is selected. I go to add and I add Ford. And yes, it is a Ford. So I've added Ford. Yes, that is the correct tagging. I press OK and I see it comes up that there is a Ford there. Now that will satisfy the validation tool. And those are the three ways that waterways cross 
roads and rivers. Please check for that and make sure. If there's none of those three where a waterway crosses a road, then it is incorrect and it is needs to be fixed. Okay, um, sorry, we'd be running over time now. Um, if there are any last questions, um, please um, let's have a look now. Is it useful or required to use the simplify tool to simplify road waterway while validating? Um, remember that every time that you use a, a tool, um, it is an automated process. After you've used the, the tool, please check that the tool has correctly um, uh, aligned to the imagery um, because it doesn't always, it doesn't see the imagery. All it does is it generates an algorithm which will um, align a road um, and remove some unnecessary nodes. Please check that it has aligned it correctly if you do use that tool. The same as if, if you select a whole series of buildings and then square them all at once or only select one building and square it, um, <clears throat> please check that um, it does align with the building and has been squared correctly to the building. Um, so yes, that is. But remember, it's not always your function to correct mistakes. It's your function to check that um, uh, all the mapping has been completed and it has been completed to a good standard. If you only take you about 10 minutes or 15 minutes to fix up a few items on the task, then please go ahead and fix it yourself. But if it takes more than 15 minutes, and um, please consider invalidating the task and getting someone else to fix it, uh, leaving a very good comment so that they understand what still needs doing. Right, thank you all. Thank you for attending um, this training validation um, session. And I hope you have learned quite a lot from it. I don't expect you to have understood and, and taken on everything on board. Um, because we went through quite a lot of things. There was a lot of things to um, cover. So please, um, thank you very much. And please use what we have been telling you. And let me just check in the chat. Um, so um, yes, Jeffrey, I got the two hours map. So wrapping it up. Okay, thank you. Um, no, uh, Leah asked, you must be advanced mapper being validator. It is preferred. Um, if you are not an advanced uh, validator, we will put you on the trainee validator list so you can carry on validating uh, on things that you are really experienced in like buildings um, <coughs> and uh, build up your experience on the roads and waterways so that we can transfer you to the HOP global validators so that you can do more complex things. So no, you don't need to be an advanced mapper, but have a good um, uh, grounding and understanding of what you are mapping. Remember I said, um, we will check your standard of mapping. If you really do understand what you're doing, there's no reason why you can't help with validating. Uh, how frequently are tags updated? Um, uh, they are uh, checked um, regularly. Uh, but we don't need to update a tag because a tag should, in actual fact, um, render in the, 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 the way it's supposed to. So you could quite quickly see if a road is um, unclassified or a road is a track and fix it if the road has changed. Right. Um, we need to wrap it up now, folks. Thank you very much indeed. And um, happy mapping, happy validating, and please keep safe. Thank you so much, uh, Ralph, and uh, thank you everyone for attending. Uh, keep safe.